Hello, Streets of Rage 2 graduates, and welcome back to your long-winded journey to the top. And in Stage 5, we are on the elevator, which apparently is taking us back to see Mr. X himself in his own hideout, as we had seen it in Streets of Rage 2. Thankfully, they have upgraded their elevator from both Streets of Rage 1 and 2. This one actually has walls. This one also has the really tight corridor, the, the really tight lane problem that the and that the latter portion of Streets of Rage 2 had. Uh, we only have we only have realistically two lanes versus the three or four that we're used to, depending on uh, how close you want to play it. I prefer just having either one lane or the other. I think figure a binary system is healthy for a game when you only have two players. And the only up and the only friendly fire threat is the player who's supposed to be op occupying the other lane. If I'm in the top and he's in the bottom, etc. The problem here, however, is that these guys are very powerful on the X, but you can't use the Z in order to dodge it. So what we do is we gang up, we stay together, and we just keep them the hell away from us. This guy right here can go screw himself because he does the Russian bear headbutt attack, and all he has to do is touch you in order to get you grappled. Ouch. So what do you think of the game's uh, reuse of game tracks so far, Mr. Greta? I've not noticed it. This is the streets of. This is the second stage theme. This is the one we fought Bruce and Ruin. Yeah, but that was like more than a week ago, so I don't. <laughs> I don't remember what that sounds like. I mean, I'm, <laughs> okay. okay. So, well, th thank you for reminding me that learning is a big part of familiarity, especially with music tracks. That the point I wanted to make is that Yuzo Koshiro are returning. Uh, Rena our returning composer, who is much beloved, because I think that he makes some fucking awesome beats. Um, I, you, you can get you can get used to how many tracks he prepared for, like Streets of Rage 2, for example, which has lots of different unique tracks. This game uses a lot of the same kinds of tracks, but that's okay though, because, like you said, if uh, if you weren't so unfortunate as to spend over a month playing this one game you might not get that familiar or that annoyed by the tracks. <laughs> right. Mind you, as an, arc as an arcade machine, it would be very difficult to, uh, to go away from this game for a, uh, for a month. For a month, yeah. More like a day. Because <laughs> that's what people did, is they went to the arcade, they went with their friends, brought a sack full of cordy, drank beer, and had a good fuck kicking time. Most arcades would not actually sell miners alcohol, though, so well, they would nah. have to bring in their own alcohol. They would have to bring in their own beer. Oh, well, god dang it, not miners! <laughs> People who want to get drunk under the laws of the United States Constitution. Yeah, is it actually in the? Is it actually a constitutional? Uh, um, uh, a constitutional uh, writ that? Uh, al no, it's not, because uh, we've well, amended it multiple times. Actually, the, so the U so the U.S. Constitution's claim is more like a blanket claim. It's actually the Tenth Amendment. Um, has everybody got the civics textbooks opened up now? So we're looking. So the no, I left mine in class. The, it's supposed <coughs> to stay there. The Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution, as written in the Bill of Rights, passed in 1791 or whatever, says that any powers not described by the U.S. Constitution as lawful powers of the federal government must be distributed to the states. So, by that allowance, you could say that anything not mentioned in the U.S. Constitution is permitted by the U.S. Constitution as long as it does not sue the respective United States. <laughs> this has been a momentary civics lesson with Rocket Rabbit. And Tune in next week when we will discuss the biology of, ma of major different colon uh, colonization efforts of the African giraffe. And now it is 8.30. It is time for Get Your Faces Slapped by Women Wearing Pink Hair. Let's do this. I don't want to go to P.E. That's where the pool is. 
flying slaps of fury, 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 fury. Hey, uh, hey th there was there was an elevator door there. Mr. X! You skipped the cutscene. I did skip the cutscene. Fuck. Well, what was supposed to happen was Mr. X was going to say, Well, I see you found your way here. Well done. Looks like I'm going to have to <laughs> kick your asses again. Uh, Mr. X, we defeated you two and a half times already. Uh, can you please come quietly this time? Yeah, I don't we want used to have more Tommy gun bullets uh, removed from my spleen. Yeah, we're used to seeing you on the eighth stage, and now I I see I observe that we are actually three stages early. So what gives, man? Maybe our detective skills are actually becoming more uh, more successful. I have deduced that you are a patterned fool. The, the loop for this entire rest of the boss fight is pretty, uh, short. <laughs> okay. Which, which is kind of weird. Like, for how short it is, you're usually, con you're usually so concentrated on what's happening because we got some really intense AI pretty much at any given moment. If the dude is on your side of the screen, then the onus is on you to defend yourself because there's not a, there's not a darn thing that my buddy can do about it if I, get, if I start getting hit. Right. The I noticed that Axel is not actually that good against Goldie because, well, at least your particular strategy is to do the is to do the sidekicks in order to keep them at range, so they can't use their uh, increased physical attack power on you uh, in melee. Yes, and that is why the, your combo finisher is a level one move, and that's why Goldie is a level one enemy, which makes it very unfortunate that it literally took me like. 15 hours of playing this game to realize that the combo finisher is probably the best way to take out Goldie. <laughs> How do you do it? I can't figure it out. God damn it. <laughs> no. Here's what you do, Axel. You strike him in. You strike him in the upper uh, in the upper leg with one foot, and then you reverse over to the other foot in order to do a high strike into their chest. This will not. This will knock them off balance and onto the ground. You do this over and over again because they are unable to adapt to it because they are stupid. Okay. All we gotta do is just play with these sexy women throwing whips at me and stuff. Mr. David Hayter, get back in the recording booth. We need you for Zangetsu too. I love it that Mr. X usually puts female characters before his actual lone boss fight. <laughs> Well, uh, in Streets of Rage One, Electro was you know one of the, uh, one of the most uh, interesting enemies, specifically because her outfit. What? No, it's not the. It's real... a robot duplicate. It's not the real Mr. X. I should have known. This dude is a dickhead. He has five whole health bars. Well, actually, I should not say five whole health bars. More like four and a half health bars. He moves really fast. He has projectile machine guns, and he has rocket launchers. Um, really fast action and punch combos. And he will laugh at you when he hits both of us. And they're fucking homing rockets. God damn it. They're homing rockets. All right, get ready for some fun. This is, a, this is a good test of your skills, because honestly, this boss fight is not that bad as long as you, as long as you are in control of what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, but you have to actually land your specials on him, Cloud. Well, here's a good situation right here. You could tag him up because of, because of the enemy's natural tendency to ignore who is directly behind him in favor of who is in front of him. That's why you will see at this moment, there's usually somebody behind Robot X for probably what's going to be the remainder of this boss fight. Okay. Ah, oh, but he's immune to grabs because he has electric batteries in his abdominals. Okay, he has one full health bar left, gentlemen. He's weak. Axel, stay alive. Oh, massive damage! <laughs> Almost dead. Yes! Yay! My Zan has slain the robot X. Dr. But Zan now will counteract the zero virus. Has saved Axel's bacon. Stage five clear. Is this where we get rolling armadillo shield? This is where we fight the armadillo from Donkey Kong 64. I see you continue to destroy what I create. It is obvious you will not join the syndicate. 
so I have no further use for the chief of police. You will not defeat my other robots so easily. Dr. Zan knows this model was an early prototype. God damn it. Why did he kidnap Commissioner Gordon? Because he's trying to replace him with an identical robot clone.